All right. So talking about emergency care bags, uh, you know, the title here, I have the wasted money that I hope I never need. And I hope we all never need. Right. Um, I am Mike Hopper. I am the head of trainer at Bishop Lynch High School in Dallas, Texas. I have a master's degree in pediatric sports medicine from the University of South Florida, Morrisani College of Medicine. Um, I also have a bachelor's degree from the uh, from Southeast Missouri State University in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Um, lastly, I am a CPR instructor as well as a Stop the Bleed instructor. Um, have no conflicts here um, for the presentation. You know, I use a variety of products. You're going to see a variety of products in here, but I did, don't endorse necessarily any of them. Um, you know, I don't have any financial uh, gains from any of these products that, that I use here. Um, these are just what, what I use in our, in our practice. So, um, yeah, I, I listened to Daryl Conway speak quite a bit. Um, he and, and Ed Strap with the Sports Medicine Emergency Care Group. Um, but Daryl always says, if it's predictable, it's manageable. And for us as athletic trainers, for it to be manageable, we have to have the equipment prepared for that and ready to go for that. And so um, if it's predictable, it's manageable. If it's in our wheelhouse, probably needs to be in our kits ready to go. Okay. Um, so what allows us to provide emergency care? And, and when we talk about um, our emergency care backpacks and, and the equipment within it, you know, what are we looking at and why, why can we say that we can do what we can do, right? So uh, two standards here from the, from the newest KD standards. Um, okay, again, evaluate and manage patients with acute conditions, including triage situations that are life-threatening or otherwise emergent. And then uh, develop and implement and revise policies that pertain to prevention, preparedness, and response to medical emergencies and other critical incidents. So, you know, these are what we're being taught in school. These are these are what our new grads are being taught as as um, you know, not so new grads. These are also skills that we need to be able to utilize. And and so, if we're able to utilize these skills, then we need the equipment to perform these skills. Right, so um, KD standards allow us to do certain things, um, but also we have to look at practice acts and, and understand what our practice acts do and do not allow us to do. Um, you know, really important that we understand the legal side of it within our particular state. So obviously with, with this being a SWAT presentation, it's Texas and Arkansas. So in the Texas um, Practice Act, the services provided by a licensed athletic trainer may include, but not limited to. And number three, it says administering first aid and emergency management or emergency care for acute athletic injuries and illness. Um, so, you know, pretty, pretty broad, right? Pretty vague overall, um, allowing us to do what it is that, that we need to do to, to care for our kids. Um, then it also comes down to what your, your, um, uh, team physician says and and what your uh, policies and procedures say. Okay, Arkansas was really hard to find much on emergency care. And so I think the thing that's closest to it is this line right here where it says athletic training means the prevention, recognition, evaluation, treatment, and rehabilitation of athletic injuries. Um, you know, those are the domains of athletic training uh, according to the BOC and the NATA. And the um, Arkansas Practice Act seems to leave that relatively uh, vague there. So selecting an emergency bag, you know, there's really a lot of different options on the market. And I don't know that any one bag is, is the best choice, right? Um, here in the middle, you see an emergency care bag. This is an EMS backpack. This is actually the backpack that we utilize uh, through stat packs, but, um, you know, you don't have to have an EMS bag. Um, up in the upper right-hand corner, you see the NHL bag. That is a standardized back, uh, standardized kit 
that is used across the National Hockey League. And um, I was provided with a really nice PowerPoint presentation on everything that that, that bag has in it uh, by a friend of mine uh, about a year or so ago. Um, but again, it's a standard bag that is across the league in the NHL. And I think that's really something really important for us to talk about is standardizing your bags. Um, so like for us, we have two of these backpacks. They should be identical so that no matter what athletic trainer grabs, what backpack they grab, they're grabbing the same thing, right? And so um, we did choose to go with different colors. We have a, a red one and a blue one. So either way, they're going to stand out on our sidelines. However, we know that if I take something out of the red backpack, I know it came out of the red backpack. Um, and if I take something out of the blue backpack, I know it came out of the blue backpack, right? But that way we're not concerned about, oh, I took something out of a backpack, but which bag did it come from, okay? Um, and then you also see a you know, much cheaper item down here in the bottom. Um, it appears to be a piece of luggage. Uh, this is an athletic trainer from, from Southern Illinois. You know what? It's functional. It's, it still stands out. It's red. So, um, you know, if it fits what you need to fit, I think it's great, right? Um, and we're actually in the process of phasing in these, these other backpacks. Uh, we just switched to bigger ones this year from, uh, from another backpack. So, Again, finding what works for you and finding what's in your price range is, is important um, more than necessarily what it looks like. So uh, let's talk about some of the things in the backpacks themselves. And, and um, we'll talk about the equipment that we have in our bag and uh, definitely not an you know encompassing list. I'm sure, I'm sure even we're thinking of things that are missing, um, but I've also found things that uh, that um, you know we've utilized in in other ways so um you know we we carry some diagnostic tools we, we carry a stethoscope and we just upgraded these to um Uh, we upgraded these to uh, Littman stethoscopes this year, and um, so that we have the best stethoscopes that we can get on the market. Uh, we do have blood pressure cuff, and we also carry a pulse ox. So we these are the things we've utilized in our kit um, more than anything else. And uh, I've actually taken this backpack a couple times around school already. Um, where we've needed this type of equipment more so than other emergency equipment. Um, obviously, when we talk about our trauma backpacks, we're always going to be talking about the AED. I think this is a pretty common piece of equipment for all of us. But, um, you know, so this, the AED that we carry at the moment, um, this is a G3 fully automatic AED. Um, but whatever AED that you have, and that you're comfortable with is, is great. Um, and then we have the CPR ready kit and uh, we carry this in the main pouch, main pocket of the, uh, of the backpack. Uh, we carry bag valve mask, all of us as athletic trainers and, and as BLS uh, certified um, CPR individuals. Um, are taught and trained on, on the bag valve mask. So I think it's really important that we carry one um, and, and be, you know, be functional with it, be uh, comfortable using it, okay? Um, airway adjuncts, I think this is one of those areas that, that might surprise some people uh, carrying airways. Uh, we do carry uh, oral and nasal airways, OPAs, MPAs. And the question then also becomes, do we do we carry uh, superglottic airways? And uh, as athletic trainers, we we can. Um, you know, it, it is within our our capabilities if we've been taught and, and we've been able to practice how to use them. Um, so I think this one comes down to what you're comfortable with, what your team physician is comfortable with. 
At the moment, we don't carry superglottic airways in our kit. Um, however, I think that is something that we will eventually add um, as we continue to move forward and, and gain practice in that particular um, area. Okay. Oxygen, I think this is a topic that a lot of athletic trainers kind of shy away from. Uh, we do carry oxygen um, and we carry non rebreather masks, as you see, um, not only for, you know, we think about that CPR case, but we also think about uh, sickle cell and oxygen is an important piece in sickle cell treatment. So um, we've started carrying oxygen um, about seven years ago, I guess. And uh, we just upgraded to these, which actually is what caused us to need to buy the bigger backpacks was these bigger oxygen tanks. Um, medications, again, medications are gonna come down to practice act and, and standard op operating procedures. Um, we do carry Narcan. Uh, Dallas is a hot zone for, for fentanyl overdose at the moment, opioid overdose. And so we now carry Narcan with all of our AEDs. And so we carry it in our uh, backpacks as well. Um, recently received training on that within the last year or so. And so we are now carrying that as, as a standard um, medication in our backpack. We also do carry EpiPens and um, uh, we have used these in athletics. Once or twice, I feel like we use them around the school as well. Um, you know, and again, that comes down to where uh, having a prescription for them and having them in our in our policies, we do have them um, as standard operating procedures as a school. Um, so we do carry two doses of them in our backpacks at this time. And then the last medication that we carry as a standard product is an albuterol inhaler. So. Um, that's what many of our kids are going to use is, is an albuterol inhaler. And so we have um, gotten permission from our team physician uh, to also carry an inhaler as well um, in our in our kits. So um, again, comes down to what what is allowable within your practice act and what is allowable within your your orders from your team physician. So these are things that are all, allowable um in the state of texas uh the only one that you might have difficulty with would be in it be the inhalers um the other two items the epipen and the narcan are um covered under state law uh for allowable use in in schools so um you you just may have to talk to your administration on that and talk to your team physician um, and then the other thing we do carry is we, we carry a full stop the bleed kit. So we do carry a couple of um, uh, tourniquets and we do carry um, uh, hemostatic gauze and um, rolled, rolled gauze as well as the ACE bandages. So we carry a, a full set of uh turning or i'm sorry a full stop the bleed kit um or any type of um major bleeding incident that might occur okay and then um the other thing that we carry is we carry a full assortment of face mask removal equipment in our backpack so um i like redundancy as you can see and so we carry um garden shears and FM extractor. So basically the two of the same thing. And then um, um, manual screwdriver and an electric screwdriver. And then a Riddell uh, quick release tool for, for your speed flex and your uh, speed helmets. So even though we've actually moved away from Riddell helmets completely, I do carry them. Um, um, just in case, you know, one of our opponents is wearing a Rydell helmet. So other things to consider, these are things that we're talking about adding and, and that you might want to consider adding. 
um, a rectal thermometer into your kit. So, you know, we've always kind of fluctuated where, how do we carry a rectal thermometer? Where do we, you know, how do we keep that available? And so um, we found that this will actually fit nicely into our kits underneath our AEDs in the main pocket. And so that's gonna be added here very soon. Um, a glucometer for your diabetics, um, for blood sugar measuring, uh, pen lights, Okay, um, and then I, I also have here a suction device. Um, so again, we purchased these devices. We haven't actually put them into our bags yet, and I have to figure out how they fit into our bags. Um, but that's something for you to consider. Not super expensive. I think ours were about $35 to purchase, and they're going to be a one-use item. So we use them once. I'm throwing it away, and I'll buy a new one. Um, and then... You know, some other things, obviously, I, I think EMT scissors and exam gloves, I think it are pretty standard, right? Um, I mean, I'm carry, I carry those on my person, but I think it's also important to add more of those into uh, the bag as well, just so that you have them uh, readily available or for additional personnel that come up on the scene. Um. One document I want to show, this is something I got off of the secondary school's Facebook group that uh, this guy says that he uses in his um, exertional heat illnesses situations. He, um, he has this form that he's made where you can do serial vital signs and uh, you, can, you can document um, different times when they go in the tub, when they, their temperature is checked, uh, when they come out of the tub, what kind of symptoms they're experiencing, things like that. And then, like I said, being able to check pulse and uh, rectal temp and blood pressure and those sorts of things across the board um, to where you can document that on the fly. He said he has this um, on a uh, laminated sheet and then he has like a dry erase marker so he can he or, or another coach or somebody can be writing on it the whole time and documenting as we go. Um, I think this is a great idea, something I plan to steal, um, not only for an exertional heat stroke patient, but any type of trauma patient. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go through it and, and change some of the things and, and create our own. Um, because you've seen other people document on a piece of athletic tape or something like that. I think this would just make things a little bit more organized and um, and go from there. So um, just want to give you that idea and throw that out there for you. Okay, and then if you have any questions, this is my contact information, uh, my school email, my personal Twitter, and uh, our school Twitter.